you've probably heard that there's this double slit experiment. The essence of this experiment is that it actually demonstrates the phenomenon of wave particle duality. In one case, we see particles behaving like particles, and in another case, we observe that they act like a wave. Moreover, this interesting phenomenon tells us that there is actually something called the observer effect. It's completely unclear how all of this can be explained without resorting to the methods of quantum physics. The methods of quantum physics, just to remind you, include things like, well, quantum superposition, for example, which was illustrated through the legendary concept of Schrödinger's cat, some other things, observers, different observer effects. These are the kinds of moments that really don't correlate well with classical physics, and because of that, they create a conflict between our understanding and the theory. But despite all this, we need to somehow explain moments like the double slit experiment. If you've forgotten, let me remind you that the double slit experiment is actually quite simple. And it consists of the fact that we take a certain plate, make slits in this plate, place a screen behind it, and then set up a light source. And so in one case, our light source forms an image of these two slits, and in the other case, we have the result of interference. But the essence of the problem is that to explain such a tricky phenomenon, quantum representations of the world start to be used. Let it be fine, let it be, I don't know, new physics, let it be that part we can't just dismiss. But is it really impossible to try to explain this in some other ways? It turns out there is such a way. This concept is called constitutional realism. Why constitutional? Because there's the word context. This word largely defines what we will be discussing. Let's consider a simple example. We have two billiard balls. These two billiard balls collide. If we look at this phenomenon relative to some common coordinate system, it turns out that each ball has a certain speed. Now imagine that two balls are rolling towards each other, colliding, and the reference system is tied to one specific ball. In this reference system, the ball will literally disappear. Why is this so? Because relative to this reference system, the ball will be at rest. And imagine another situation where you're riding a bicycle and you're in one reference system. Your speed relative to the bicycle is actually zero. This is the ideal case because if it changes, it means you're moving separately from the bicycle, which isn't very good and definitely not very useful. To some extent, we can assume that if one of the objects has a speed of zero, since we've latched onto speed as a fundamental property, then this object, to some degree, well, let's say it disappears from this reference frame. There's another more vivid example. When you use scales, like kitchen scales, most modern models have a very good and interesting feature. This interesting feature allows you to calibrate, let's say, the container you've placed. For example, you and I are interested in measuring out 200 grams of flour for some kind of pie. And we don't care how much the bowl weighs. And modern systems have a tearing function. We put an empty container in, press a button, and this container actually disappears from our measurement. Why did we say all this? It seems obvious that if we tie a reference frame to a moving body, and this reference frame is based on that moving body, then that body in this reference frame will have zero traits. And how can this be linked to the double slit experiment, where we work with quantum superposition, which as we mentioned is tied to Schrodinger's cat, and this Schrodinger's cat is very questionable. And how can this be related to the double slit experiment, where we work with quantum superposition, which, as we've already mentioned, is tied, let's say, to Schrodinger's cat. And this Schrodinger's cat itself raises a lot of questions. If you remember, quantum superposition is tied to the so-called wave function. The wave function, in essence, is a set of possibilities that can exist for a specific system. That's why it's often said that a particle exists in all states at once. This implies that a particle has multiple states that are encoded in this wave function. And the observer effect, to some extent, actually allows us to choose the state option that, well, there are many different concepts and interpretations, I always say, that best corresponds to what is happening, roughly speaking, around us. And the probability of such a state is the highest. It is generally chosen through measurement. And now let's imagine that there are a huge number of reference frames in which this can be measured. In one reference frame, the balls will roll in one direction at a certain speed. In another reference frame tied to a different point, the balls will roll at a different angle and with a different speed. In the reference frame tied to one of the balls, one of the balls will be at rest. And this kind of imaginative play, this play of contexts, will lead to states where nothing exists at all. Quantum superposition, which we have in quantum physics and which serves as a starting point for explaining many phenomena, in this case can be replaced by an incredible number of states. 
Quantum superposition in consensual realism is meaningless. Consensual realism implies that there are many states that can exist due to changing reference frames. But if we haven't examined the object yet, if we haven't made any measurements, if we have a particle in a state of superposition, then it makes no sense because we don't understand relative to what we are considering this particle. But if we haven't examined the object yet, if we haven't made any measurements, if we have a particle in a state of superposition, then, fundamentally, it doesn't make any sense because we don't understand relative to what we are considering this particle. Contextual realism is a hybrid of probability theory, classical mechanics, and quantum physics concepts. From quantum physics, only generalizations remain, while from classical mechanics and Newton's ideas, we derive simple relativity interactions. The crux is that multiple relativities lead to strange occurrences. The only difference is that from quantum physics, only these generalizations remain, and from classical mechanics and everything else that Newton himself literally approves. They took this, well, let's say, simple interaction of relativity. The essence of this phenomenon is that a multitude of relativities gives rise to strange occurrences. So how would contextual realism explain the legendary double-slit experiment? It's actually quite simple. We have an incredible number of different positions where the observer and the objects can be. In some cases, it results in such a mess that the object literally disappears. We talked about negative probabilities, and with certain arrangements of objects, there is a resulting system, a resulting situation, where the probabilities become equal to zero. And at that moment, black stripes appear, black stripes on the screen. In other words, the particle wave duality turns into a set of relativities. And in the case where we have these two slits that we see, we actually observe this arrangement in the context of our measurement. This means that the observer is now right here, and this is how they see it. I'm an artist, this is how I see it. The relative positions of particles, the object and observers have become such that in this context, reality is perceived in this way. Quantum catalysis, which always amazes us, is now built solely on the fact that there is an incredible multitude of possible variations in which the system can exist. The movement of the observer in this system leads us to observe a variety of outcomes, including the complete disappearance of these particles. The logic of contextual realism is based on the idea that we consider the system solely as classical. There are no tricks involving quantum superposition, and these puzzling phenomena are simply explained as a result of the complex interactions of observation choices regarding the system. And essentially, if we take that example with billiard balls, it miniaturizes the entire complexity of the situation that can exist. In some cases, we will have two balls moving. In some cases, one ball will be stationary while the other moves, depending on the chosen reference frame. When choosing reference frames that are in another ball, the picture will completely change. And this replaying of constant variations leads to a situation where the picture is constantly changing and looks strange. And it all depends on just one thing, the context that is chosen.